Today on Bold Steps with Mark Job, we're learning about the power of real spiritual influence. You see, he doesn't choose the smartest. He doesn't choose the richest. He doesn't choose the most accomplished. He chooses people that are willing to believe him, and that gives us access to the throne room of God. That allows us to become people of influence. Welcome to Bold Steps with Mark Job, Senior Pastor of New Life Community Church and President of Moody Bible Institute, both in Chicago. I'm Wayne Shepherd. Now, this past week, we've been in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, and we've been focusing our attention on Abraham. And Mark, you call him Mr. Faith, but there are many Christians out there who are standing at a crossroads wondering, should I believe or not? And I think you want to encourage those who have made it this far not to give up. This message is really about how to have influence with God, and you cannot influence the hand or heart of God without a measure of faith. That's really what caused Abraham to be called a friend of God. Yes. Uh, I, I love the fact that it was his faith that caused him to be a friend of God, because faith is the, it's the currency uh, that allows us to have that dynamic relationship with God. And I believe that we do have influence with God and that our prayers can change uh, our world and and our setting, uh, but it requires a measure of trusting God that we call faith. Yeah. Abraham wasn't perfect, and we're not perfect, but we can be filled with faith, can't we, just as he was. Well, this message is called The Power of Spiritual Influence, so let's listen now as Mark Job comes. I believe that faith-filled people have influence. In fact, I believe that the more faith you have, the greater your influence. Uh, Some of us don't understand how influential you are. And some of you don't understand that you have the ability to move the heavens, and when the heavens are moved, the earth is shaken. Uh, Some of you don't understand that you have a pass, a name tag, that allows you to get into the most coveted, powerful, sacred place in all of the universe. And no, I'm not talking about the White House. You say, well, I would sure like to have a pass to get in the White House. Man, wouldn't it be cool just to show up at the White House anytime I wanted? They see a name tag, they say, oh, it's you, come on in. Come on into the Oval Office. You want to talk to the president? No problem. Here you go. Well, I'm talking to you about having the access to a place that's much more powerful than the Oval Office. I'm talking to you about having access to a place that also has a throne, and it's the throne room of God. And you have been given access to not intermediate access, but direct access to the throne room of God, you have a pass that allows you to come into the Holy of Holies and influence God Almighty. You have the ability to enter into the Holy of Holies, a place where the angels timidly and fearfully tread, a place that moves and shakes the destiny of nations, a place where the courses of lives are determined, a place that has more power than any other place, and that is the presence of God in the throne room of God. And what gives you that access? One simple thing. It's called faith. Faith is the pass that allows you to get into the Holy of Holies. And so today I want to talk to you about the power of spiritual influence, and in Genesis chapter 18, we begin reading in verse 16 of Genesis chapter 18. You remember last week that I mentioned to you that three strangers were passing by Abraham, and Abraham invited those strangers to come into his house and showed hospitality because he was actually stopping the presence of God. One of those was God himself. And now at the end of the visit, we see that these three strangers are about to leave. And in verse 16, 
it tells us what was about to happen. Listen, I'm going to begin reading out of the New International Version in verse 16. When the men got up to leave, they had just eaten and spent some time with Abraham, these three men, one of whom was the angel of the Lord or God himself. They looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Now, how many of you are familiar with the term Sodom, the city of Sodom? Okay, Sodom and Gomorrah. You said, I thought that was a husband and wife. No, it's two cities that were close to each other. And you may recognize these terms because Jesus referred to Sodom and Gomorrah in the New Testament, and it's quoted often in the Old Testament because Sodom and Gomorrah were two cities that became synonymous with the judgment of God. They were two cities that ultimately met the destruction that came from the hand of God. And so you'll see it in the New Testament where people say, well, hey, your end will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Or if Sodom and Gomorrah would have received the message that you had had, they would have repented and turned around. Anytime in the New Testament you hear referred to Sodom and Gomorrah, it's always the illustration of like judgment coming upon them. Now, Sodom was the place that Lot had decided to go and live. Lot was Abraham's nephew. And it says these three men were on a journey, on a mission to Sodom. And Abraham was walking alongside of them. One was the angel of the Lord. Remember, God himself with two other angels. Verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all the nations on the earth will be blessed through him. I love verse 17, because verse 17 gives us an insight into how God thinks. God is speaking either to himself or he's speaking to the angels, the other two men that are beside him, walking with him, and he says, hey, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Uh, think about this for a minute. It's God himself, the God of the universe, saying, hey, should I share my plans with Abraham? Hey, should I share this secret with Abraham? Let me tell you, there's things that only God knows, but that his heart is compelled to share. And who does he want to share those secrets with? Who does he want to share his plans with? Abraham was called a friend of God with friends. Hey, you've all had things in your heart at times, right? You have plans and maybe you're thinking about starting a new business or moving or doing something or you have a surprise or you have an agenda. There's something that you want to do that you don't want to share with everybody. But if you do share it, who do you share it with? Typically, your close friends, right? So I'm, I'm going to call up my best friend. I'm going to call him on the phone and you say, hey, don't share this with anybody, but you're the first person I'm sharing this with. You're the one I wanted to tell first. When God chooses to reveal his plans, who does he reveal it to? He reveals it to his friends. You say, well, I wish I was one of the close friends of God. Well, you can be. You say, well, how do I get into the inner circle? I mean, how do I become one of those people that God really shares his heart with? Well, let me tell you, there's just one way. You say, well, do I have to memorize like 30 verses to really get into that inner circle? No. Hey, do I have to do a lot of real good works and measure up and really be better than 90% of the people? No. You say, there's just one way. And that one way is through faith. Do you remember in Genesis chapter 15, it says, And Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as what? As righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is being made right with God. And this was credited to Abraham. Why? Hey, we, we see stories of Abraham, how he compromised, how he lied, how he didn't. Uh, sometimes he twisted, he compromised, he did the wrong thing. But one thing is true of Abraham, that Abraham believed God. He was a man of faith. And we've been learning that everything good that comes from God comes via faith. 
Listen, your salvation, your eternal salvation did not come because you were better than anybody else. You receive it through faith. If you had healing body of the body or of the spirit, you received it through faith. Every good gift that you comes to your life comes via faith. You want to get close to God. You want to be part of God's inner circle. It requires one thing. It requires faith. Do you remember the story of the Cy Syrophoenician woman who had an issue of blood? She had a blood disease. Do you remember that story? And there were people that were crowded around Jesus, uh, his disciples, in a large crowd. And this woman, this feeble woman who had a severe anemia because she was losing blood, makes her way through the crowd. She reaches out her hand and she touches the hem of the garment of Jesus. And do you remember what happened? Well, this extraordinary thing happened. It says that power was released from Jesus into this woman. Well, there were people all around. What made this woman different? She approached Jesus with faith. It was her faith. She believed. And so I want you to understand that God considers faith. Write this down. God considers faith-filled people as he lays out his plans. In fact, it tells us in, in, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that God hath chosen the foolish things of the world. Well, the what? The foolish things of the world. Why? To confound the wise. And guess what else he's chosen? The weak things of the world. Why? He's chosen the weak things of the world so that the mighty things of the world would be surprised and the things that are not so that the things that are would marvel at his presence you see he doesn't choose the smartest he doesn't choose the richest he doesn't choose the most accomplished he doesn't choose the ones that have the biggest nameplates on their office door he chooses people that are willing to believe him and that gives us access to the throne room of God. That allows us to become people of influence. It doesn't matter who you are or whether people know your name. When you have faith, simply trusting in God, you become a person of influence. This is Bold Steps with Mark Joe. We'll continue today's message in just a moment. But did you know that if you ever miss one of these daily teachings on the radio, or if you want to go back and revisit a message, you can do that anytime by visiting boldsteps.org. Or if you're looking to tune in during a walk or over your lunch break, subscribing to our Bold Steps podcast is a great option. Just open up your preferred podcast app, search for Bold Steps with Dr. Mark Job, and hit that subscribe button. We're also excited to announce the brand new Bold Steps app, which features full-length original sermons from Mark, along with relevant teaching videos and exclusive series of relevant topics like identity, depression, and family. Just open up your app store and download the Bold Steps app and check it all out today. Now let's return to the message. It's called The Power of Spiritual Influence. Notice verse 18. Abraham will become a great and powerful nation, and all the nations will be blessed through him. Verse 19. For I have chosen him. Why did he choose him? Because of his faith. I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. I want you to notice the contrast between Abraham and Lot. Abraham had no political position. Lot, it seems to be in chapter 19 verse 1, it tells us that Lot was actually sitting at the city gate of Sodom, which means any time in the Bible where you see the, in the Jewish culture where it talks about someone sitting at the city gates, it means that it was a place of prominence. It was a place of authority. They held some sort of political position, leader in the community. It says, and he was sitting at the city gates. It means that they were there to judge the people that came in and the people that went out. They had a place of prominence. Lot had become a community and civic leader in Sodom. He had a title. Abraham had no title. Uh, Lot held a position. Abraham hold, held no position. 
But if you want to talk about real influence, it was Abraham that had influence in the sight of God. Can I just tell you something? Some of you are saying, well, if I just knew this person, man, if I just was friends of the alderman, hey, if I could just get an appointment with so-and-so, man, I could do some things. And this person had my card, and if I knew him, who knows him, who knows him, who knows this guy, knows that guy, man, we could do some things. And can I tell you something? Some of you need to stop trying to get to know politicians, and you need to start trying to get to know that little grandmother that sits in the back of the, in the, back of the church, and she knows how to pray. You say, well, if I could talk to this alderman or this politician, man, he could really move and shake things around. No, talk to that grandmother. That grandmother that has a worn-out Bible, a tear-stained, worn-out Bible because she's read it through 30 times, and when she prays, the heavens listen. And when she prays, the heavens stand still, and they say, quiet, granny's praying. And when granny prays, we all listen. Because she has influence in the heavens and she moves things because she has access to the throne room of God. And some of us need to understand that Lot had a position, but Abraham had access to God. And when Abraham prayed, God listened. And Abraham was a friend of God and God listened to Abraham. And some of us need to know where real spiritual power and influence lies. It lies in the laps of those that have faith and access to God Almighty. Amen? Not only do, you, do I want you to know that God considers faith-filled people as He lays out His plans, but I will also want you to know that God reveals His heart and His purposes to faith-filled people. Look what it says in verse 20. Then the Lord said... The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Well, this is a real interesting verse here. There was an outcry that was coming from Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I started studying this passage a little bit. And I asked myself this question, well, who was crying out to God? Well, the more I thought about and studied this passage, I realized it was no human being that was crying out to God, but an outcry was coming up to the heavens. It's like, for example, this building, it's an 84,000 square foot building, so it's a lot of building. And we have an alarm system on this building. And when we're about to leave the building at night uh, or close up the building, you look on the alarm code, and if a door is not properly closed, the alarm will say there is a door on the east wing or over here that's left open, and so we know there's a problem in that area, right? And because the alarm tells us there's an issue, there's a problem in that particular area. So alarms, when you hear an alarm... It makes you want to do something, right? When you hear an alarm, it means, hey, there's danger. Something's happening. Some of you are already looking for the fire exits. Like, well, where do I go next? Well, there's an alarm in the heavenly system as well. And how? who sets off that alarm? I believe that as God scans the globe, There are certain things that set off the alarm of God, and God looks as he looks throughout the globe. There are alarms that sound, and God knows there's a problem in a certain area as those spiritual alarms are set off. You say, well, who's setting off those alarms? Well, listen, Uh, look at what it says in James chapter 5, verse 4. It says, behold, listen to this, behold, The pay of the laborers who mowed your fields and which has been withheld by you. In other words, the pay of those that have worked for you, but you haven't paid them what's right, or you haven't paid them their paycheck, their pay cries out against you. 
Who's pay? Their paycheck's crying. Their paycheck is saying, hey, God, not paying me enough. Some of you are saying, wow, I think my paycheck's crying out too. My paycheck, cry louder. It says, and the outcry of those who did the harvesting has reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, the injustice of people being abused and not given proper wages or being withheld, that injustice rises before the throne of God and sets off an alarm that says injustice is happening here. I remember in Genesis chapter 4, verse 10, Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve. Remember when Cain killed Abel in Genesis 4, 10, it says, your brother's blood cries out to me from where? From the ground. It doesn't say your brother's crying. He was dead. It says his blood, that blood, that red blood that spilt on the ground has a voice. And it cries out to God Almighty, hey, injustice is happening here. Wow, you know what this tells me? It tells me that anywhere in the world where injustice is happening, anywhere where people are being oppressed, it tells me that it is sending alarms, signals up to God Almighty. And though no one on earth may know or cry out to God, God still knows and God still cares. And it gets the attention of God. This is Bold Steps. You're listening to the Bible teaching of Mark Job. Today is just the start of our message titled The Power of Spiritual Influence, and we'll continue with part two when we come back tomorrow. But just because today's program is coming to a close doesn't mean we have to say goodbye. You can connect with us in our growing community online through Facebook, Instagram, and even YouTube by logging into your account and searching for Bold Steps Radio. Don't forget to tap the subscribe button when you get to our pages. Of course, you can also connect with us on our website and explore all the other faith-building tools and opportunities we have there by going online to boldsteps.org. Mark? Wayne, what if the key to fulfilling life is not trying harder, uh, but in receiving freely? Uh, That's the transformative message that Carrie Schmidt's book, Stop Trying, communicates. We're happy to have Carrie in the studio with us today. And Carrie, you use storytelling to help readers see themselves through God's eyes. Can you share how this approach impacts our understanding of identity? Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, Most people don't think consciously very much about their identity or where they're finding their source of validation and security and significance. We all need this. We all look for this culture comes at us and and gives us two options. Either you define me or I define me. Uh, Mm -hmm. If you define me, I've got to live up to your expectations and and achieve your validation. Uh, That's ultimately going to prove insufficient. If I define me, then I've got to deep dive into my psyche and Mm -hmm. figure it out for myself. And that leads to all kinds of self-experimentation and self-destruction. And, you know, Jesus steps into that and offers us a third alternative through the gospel. And in the book, we use stories from scripture, characters in the Old and New Testament that experience this exact journey. And I would say we we frame those stories through modern terminology and we, we'll see it clearly. And then I try to use personal and, and heartwarming stories that just draw us closer to the heart of Christ and uh, put the reader at rest finally and deeply and ultimately at the feet of Jesus and resting in who he says that I am. And there's no safer place. It's such a freeing message, isn't it, Mark? It really is. And I love the fact that you refer to it as the third alternative. Not the outside, not the inside, but the Jesus side helping define us. Hey, this is a huge message, so needed at this time. The book is called Stop Trying, How to Receive, Not Achieve Your Real Identity by Pastor Kerry Schmidt. So grateful that you've written this book and excited to see this in the hands of many of our listeners. And whether the book is for you or someone you know who could really use this liberating resource, we encourage you to request a copy today. Just give your gift of any amount to support Bold Steps. Give us a call. Our phone number is 800-D-L-Moody. That's 800-356-6639. Or go online to give a gift of support and request the book when you visit boldsteps.org. You can even send your gift and request the book in the mail. Write to us at Bold Steps, 820 North LaSalle Boulevard, 
Chicago, Illinois 60610. And you know, here at Bold Steps, we've been given the unique opportunity to reach people right in their homes with the power and truth of God's Word. But we couldn't continue this gospel work without the support of our bold partners. And when you commit to giving a gift of at least $30 or more each month, you'll be joining this visionary team, helping us communicate the bold and hopeful message of Christ with those who need to hear it most. You'll also receive some really great benefits in return. To learn more and sign up today, just visit boldsteps.org or give us a call at 800-356-6639. Well, I'm Wayne Shepherd, inviting you to join us again tomorrow when we'll discover how one man stood in the gap for the people around him. The message is called The Power of Spiritual Influence and it's coming up Thursday on Bold Steps with Mark Joe. Bold Steps is a production of Moody Radio, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute.